Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today I have my very first System76 laptop review. I covered a lot of Linux manufacturers over the years, including Tuxedo, Slimbook, Star Labs, and more, but it's the first time I could get my hands on a System76 laptop. So this one is the Pangolin, which is their everyday 15-inch Ultrabook with great battery life and pretty good performance. So let's see what this thing can do and who today's sponsor is. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to develop your online presence, you need a website. And with Squarespace, it's really, really easy. They are your all-in-one solution for building, designing and running your very own website. Whether you're looking for a simple blog, a portfolio, or even an online shop, they have pre-built themes and layouts that you can customize thoroughly, and they have tons of modules to add the features you need. And they can even help you book a domain name in a few clicks and design your own logo if you need help getting started. So if you want to start building your own online presence, head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment, or just click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So what does a System76 laptop look like? Well, the Pangolin looks like your standard 15 inch Ultrabook. It's pretty thin at 0.71 inches or 1.8 centimeters, and it weighs 1.79 kilos or almost four pounds. It's 16 by nine with a 15.6 inches screen and it's made of aluminum. The chassis is all matte black with the only plastic elements being the screen bezel, the hinge guards and the ventilation grille at the back. It looks really sleek and understated and the only thing I don't like in the design is the fact that the black surface is sort of a fingerprint magnet it's not horrible, but it will definitely retain a few smudges. The only visible branding is on the lid with a white System76 logo, and that's it. And contrary to other manufacturers like Slimbook or Tuxedo, you can't get your own logo engraved on this one. It's a System76 laptop and it's gonna say System76 on it. The aluminium chassis is robust with minimal deck flex around the hinge or the palm rests, and a bit more give in the middle of the keyboard, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. The hinge might look a bit puny, but it feels solid as well. You can lift it with one finger and it has a good amount of resistance and it doesn't wobble too much. The laptop is also pretty modular. You can open it easily with 11 screws, but if access to the storage is the only thing you want, then it's just one screw. There's a dedicated little trap door at the bottom to easily swap drives. Only the battery, wireless card and storage are accessible, the RAM seems soldered. So yeah, the Pangolin is a good looking laptop. It's solid, it's user serviceable, apart from the RAM, but we'll see in a minute why that isn't really a problem, and yeah, it feels like a good Ultrabook. The only problem is its name sounds like Benedict Cumberbatch trying to say the word penguin. Crested penguins. Okay, what's inside this thing? Well, the only CPU you can get is the Ryzen 7 6800U, an 8-core 16-threads chip that goes up to 4.7 GHz. It's paired with the integrated Radeon 680M, which sounds like a dedicated GPU, but is in fact integrated with the CPU. You can also only get it with 32 gigs of RAM. It's the default configuration, and there's nothing lower or higher. In terms of storage, you get a minimum of a 250 gig PCIe 4 NVMe SSD, and you can spec that up to 16 terabytes of PCIe 4 SSD. It comes with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, and you can either get it with Pop! OS 22.04 or Ubuntu 22.04 out of the box, although any distro should run well on this thing. It's a pretty powerful build. The CPU is very competent, and with 32 gigs of RAM, even if you can't upgrade it yourself, it should be future-proof for the whole lifetime of this device. And I must say, it's nice to finally get laptops that don't ship with the default 8 gigs, which for today is definitely not enough. And okay, now you can tell me that your laptop only has 500 megabytes of RAM and that it's been running perfectly fine. Go ahead, write it in the comment and get it over with. The display is 15.6 inches and only 1080p which might be a bit low on a 15 inch device. I kind of like 1440p for that size, but 1080p isn't bad or anything. It's 144 Hertz refresh rate, which means it's smooth in daily use. And at that default setting, it still manages to get pretty good battery life thanks to the 70 watt hour battery that it ships with. Now for an Ultrabook, this thing has a lot of holes in it. Ports, I mean, it, it's useful holes mostly. 
So on the left you get the barrel charger, an HDMI 2.0 port, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port that supports DisplayPort 1.4 and also supports charging the device. Although the included pretty small power brick doesn't come with a USB-C cable for charging or a USB-C port for that matter. You can buy a 65 watt charger that comes with the USB-C cable if you prefer, but it's 2023 and I guess if the barrel charger isn't mandatory to deliver enough juice to keep the device charging, then you should probably all get rid of it and just provide USB-C everywhere. Now you also get a headphone jack and interestingly a physical kill switch for the webcam, complete with a little LED to let you know when the camera is off. On the right you have another type A USB 3.2 Gen 2, a full size SD card reader, which is nice, a pop out gigabit ethernet port and that little Kensington lock to keep your laptop attached to your desk. That's really good IO for an Ultrabook. Three USB ports, one USB-C, one HDMI plus ethernet. Would I have preferred a second USB-C on the other side instead of a regular type A? Sure, but it's still not bad. Okay, let's move on to the performance before we take a look at the rest of that thing. The Ryzen 7 6800U is a pretty powerful CPU. On Geekbench 6, it got a single core score of 2002 and a multi-core score of 8662. So it's on par with a Core i7-12700 and generally it's doing better in single core performance. Definitely more than what you'll need for this form factor. In terms of graphics, the integrated Radeon 680M can deliver surprisingly good performance, running the usual Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at the native 1080p and medium settings, it got 30 FPS on average, and on low settings it managed an average of 42. This game is notoriously badly optimized and generally it really struggles on integrated GPUs, especially on the Intel side where even with an XE graphics, it's rare that you'll reach 30 FPS at low settings. So yeah, it's better. It's still not incredible and you're not going to do AAA gaming on this thing, but it can definitely run some graphics intensive programs. As per thermals, at idle, the CPU ran at around 34 to 38 degrees Celsius and under load during gameplay, it never went past 91. And the fan noise is definitely audible, but manageable. It will never scream at you. And while it's typically high pitched like most laptops, it's not horrible. Now for the battery life, with the display at 144 Hz in balanced mode, running YouTube videos in a loop on Firefox, it lasted for seven hours. When putting it in battery saving mode, with the display running at 60 Hz, it lasted for eight and a half hours. That's pretty good. It will definitely hold for a full day of work because if you have a normal workload that doesn't involve video decoding from the internet in a loop, you'll probably get a little bit more than the numbers that I benchmarked here. The Pangolin comes with a chiclet style keyboard. It's backlit with just one single color, no RGB here, and only two levels of brightness, but it's definitely enough to make it legible in the dark. It comes with a numpad, but it's pretty squished with keys at about two thirds of the usual size. And it also means they didn't center the trackpad, which I do not like. The keyboard itself is nice to use. It might not seem like it because it's recessed in the chassis, but key travel is good. The stroke is precise and the keys are large and nice. It lacks a bit of bounce back for my taste, but it's not a mushy keyboard by any means. And it comes with a super key, of course. Which, okay, I definitely prefer over any sort of cartoony tux logo or icon. Super just looks better, it's more descriptive, it's just a better option. The sound of the keyboard follows the theme of this laptop, it's also understated. It's not too clicky and it will not annoy people around you. As for the touchpad, it's a decent size, it's very smooth, and while it's not centered, which always annoys me, it works really well with Pop OS's gestures. The click is solid and doesn't rattle at all, and the sound is satisfying. The only issue is with the two button spaces at the bottom, they don't seem to react to tap to click, which can lead to some missed inputs. And the power button might look like a fingerprint reader, but it's not, or at least there was no way for me to configure it on Pop OS. And I would really like for once to have a laptop that comes with Linux and has a fingerprint reader. Typing passwords that so 2010. The webcam is 720p and it's just not good. It feels like it's super stuttery and while it seems to compensate for backlight better than others I tried, it's still a potato cam, only serviceable for very basic video calls where you don't care how you look. The microphone is above average. 
First, it's well tuned out of the box, something no other manufacturer seems to do. So the default gain is actually one you'd want to use and it doesn't saturate or peak. Second, it doesn't pick up that much on the keyboard sounds or the trackpad, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it sucks that the webcam is bad because the microphone you might actually want to use in day-to-day -day calls. As per the speakers, they get pretty loud, but at max volume, they will definitely start vibrating the chassis and you'll hear that sort of rattly sound. Apart from that, they do have a bit of bass and they don't sound too tinny. They're good enough, basically, they're laptop speakers, but don't run them at max volume. And of course, we can't not talk about Pop! OS, because System76 creates this distro and this laptop, and they have a few nice integrated things in there. First, you get that nice recovery partition that you can update, so you always have a nice thing to fall back to in case of a problem. But you also have a support tab in the settings, with the ability to create a support ticket right from there, create your log files in one click, access documentation, and more. And Pop! OS runs extremely smoothly on this laptop, like buttery smooth. It's never been a choppy distro or anything, but I also never saw it running that nicely. And no, it's not just the high refresh rate of the screen because I already ran Pop! OS on another laptop that has the same refresh rate and it just did not feel as smooth. Now, of course, Pop! OS is now getting a bit long in the tooth with the current version being Pop! OS 22.04. And yeah, it's not extremely up to date, but it also comes with Flatpak and Flathub out of the box. So you can install most apps at a recent version anyways. So who is this laptop for? Well, the base price is $12.99 US dollars. And for that, you get an aluminium chassis, a 144 Hz screen, although admittedly only 1080p, a very good CPU and GPU combo, 32 gigs of RAM, and 250 gigs of SSD. And I'd say it's a decent price. It amounts to 1,200 euros at today's rates. And this device feels geared towards professionals. The understated black look, the solid port selection, the good battery life, it's an all-rounder. It doesn't excel at anything specifically, but it's a good choice for everything. Now, compared to devices from other Linux manufacturers, let's be honest, it all depends on where you live. In Europe, Tuxedo and Slimbook will be cheaper because shipping costs will be lower. And if you live somewhere in North or South America, then System76 will be the less expensive option. Until one of them has distribution centers all across the globe, you're basically bound by shipping rates. Still, the Pangolin is a good laptop. It's a no-nonsense, solid workhorse. It's their mid-range 15-inch. It's a good device and you can't really go wrong with it. So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video for some reason, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoyed the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links down in the description for Patreon, LibraPay, PayPal, YouTube memberships, whatever. You know how to do this. So, thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!